Okay, the second part of that is, it's also interesting to understand how and why uh, this relationship between static and living reality um, fails. It's a relationship that we're never happy with because, like I said before, it, it's always inadequate. Hard reality, nobody wants to be inside a, a stiff house for their whole life. We want to be outside, we want to be outdoors. Uh, we don't uh, we want we don't want to uh, live by the written uh, instructions of a manual or a law or or government government rules forever and eternity do we we want to continue to evolve and grow and invent new governments and come back to nature like I said so what's interesting um, is to actually see why it fails and why there's always a, a constant outgrowing by, um, by the human reality of the static reality. And I was thinking of an image um, that would get this idea across that, you know, it's almost like if you can imagine um, starting on a journey and people, you know, in a group are just kind of um, walking or trying to get across a desert or, or traveling. Um, and then we use our brain to do things. Um, you can kind of start getting ideas. That's just one, ex one, one idea that just came to mind. It's not a very good one, but I'll try to explain it anyways. There are other ideas that are more effective. I keep seeing a single person knitting something where uh, th that they're trying to um, uh, cover or uh, wrap around a growing number of people. So they can never knit or, or build the structure fast enough because people keep growing and expanding. So they're always like, and then it fails and they got to start using a different material and knit even quicker because now it's bigger than before and so they can't cover the whole number of people that there are now you know it's almost like a constant failure and i you know and and um and so i said once before in another video that humanity lives in a constant state of imbalance of instability uh, but going back to the example so this this group of people tries to cr cross a desert and so they invent maybe uh, some a cart with wheels, you know, to roll across the desert. And um, they start off, and it's working. You know, all ten people get on top of this this little vehicle, and you know, the people that are doing the inventing the the hard reality, they're still looking at the wheels and making sure that you know the axles are 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 working and everything and. All of a sudden, you know, they run into uh, kind of like wet mud and or, or a rocky uh, or, or tall grass areas, and, and, and their invention is not working anymore. Well, the the real world is that of the unexpected, is of the constantly organic, growing and uncontainable explosion of life. Thank God, because that's what makes the world wonderful is that we can't wrap ever we can never get our hard reality over it around it it will always grow stronger and bigger than uh, although we're trying to but you know wisdom would teach us that we're glad that we can that it will always be more natural than we're capable of understanding uh, and so while you know this cart is moving through the desert maybe there's let's say there's some children born and it's getting heavier and so now the people have to invent wheels that can deal with the mud or the tall grass maybe they're trying to see if uh, they can make some sleds you know that could go next to the vehicle or something and but there's also the weight problem and so our written reality is not just written reality but in it exists our linear thinking in other words logic is very closely related to speech and how we talk when we describe the world 
we can't with our language as one verb needs to follow the adjective needs to follow the article you know we it's a little train of description speech cannot possibly do justice to the cognizant three-dimensional awareness that is living and so but this is what we got <laughs> we have speech and speech you know can be very poetic and can be wonderful it can remind us and what it actually reminds us is of the three-dimensional full cognizance experience of living when we get inspired by poetry because it manages to leap out of that static uh, two-dimensional linear description to something that we can that goes into interpretation interpretation is our our um, our catalyst uh, between what we read and how to apply it towards life towards the three-dimensional living uh, full cognizance so people say you know what is <laughs> In other words, what I'm saying is that what is important is not the word itself, but interpretation is actually what matters most about language. And nothing would mean anything in language if it weren't for interpretation. Interpretation is what, uh, what makes it possible for languages to be useful and what will give worth to aware the majority of the population of a country starts saying that you know this is no longer a, a, it's a pencil but what is a pencil for it's for you know it's an instrument you know pretty soon the worth of the word pencil will be drumstick it will be used for music and it may have started as a pencil but it is now a drumstick that's what um, uh, pencil will mean so interpretation because of the usage and it's the, that usage has to do with a catalyst of, uh, of of the of the language to the whole cognizance experience will uh, make language give it give it its value okay so um, we use language which as we know it's like a, a long thread of of two-dimensional static reality um, attempts to invent objects, explain mathematics, um, explain society through through this two-dimensional static instrument of our static reality. Uh, of course, it's always going to fail. So there's many reasons why we can't catch up with the full three-dimensional cognizant sphere of, of cognizant whole existence. There are many reasons why we need to be humble and say, well, if, if it's working, if everybody's happy with it, but if there's discontent, the discontent is probably something that needs to be honored right away. That's why a smarter way to go about war, for example, and all these problems that we're having now, terrorism and conflicts, international conflicts, is to first say, okay, wait, these are human beings that are not happy about what we're doing on their, in, their, in their country, what we're proliferating in civil rights, what we're saying about homosexuality, uh, how, what, how we're handling our industries, what we're enforcing in the economy. You know, these are people that are discontent and unhappy. And we would be wiser as a species if we see that as a red flag from the human heart that's saying maybe they can't say or explain exactly what but what matters is that their discomfort is that there is their discomfort is that they're not comfortable and so our intelligence our intelligence uh, our intelligence should apply towards tr always trying to have our static a hard uh, reality catch up to the feelings the emotions the whole cognizance of the human experience not force the cognizant uh, whole living experience into the uh, written static uh, instruction that's why the world is because we have it the other way around 
It's our inventions need to serve the living body. Our inventions, our words, our, our directives, our laws, our vaccines, whatever it is, it has to have to serve the living human experience. So when people get angry and upset and violent and they want to override governmental power and plant a bomb because poor people, poor ignorant people feel that if they catch attention by killing some people because they justify it because they killed us, you know, whatever logic they use to justify their terror, their terrorism, does something, you know, it's difficult because if, if I stood in, on a, a governmental platform and also made that announcement, yes, we can imagine that all of a sudden everybody would start throwing bombs. Yay, they finally got it. Now they're going to listen to us, right? So it's not something that I'm saying, we've got to go that way. <laughs> we got to go. But we would be the wiser to address the discontents, the discomforts, the angers of humanity as giving us an alert to something that uh, to a place where the enforcement of hard reality or enforced uh, static reality is uh, is failing as it will fail with the whole cognizant reality of the human experience. Okay. It was shorter at least. 